Welcome to the lecture series on neural dynamics. In this video, we will derive the Fokker Planck equation for the membrane potential density. We have many neurons in the population. They have membrane potential trajectories that are given by this differential equation. And we focus on a term here that causes jumps of the membrane potential. Now, what is this jump size? The jump size is Q over C, and I will call it delta U jump. And then we also have continuous terms, and there's a continuous term caused by the external input current and also by the decay. And now we will use the continuity equation and on the right hand side we have the flux and the flux has these two components the jump flux where this delta u jump will play a role as well as the spike arrival frequency and then the continuous drift flux where the slope of the trajectory will play a role and the slope will be this the minus u over tau plus one over c i external So let's start with the analysis. So I have here again my continuity equation. The drift flux is the density at an arbitrary point u0 and proportional to the slope. And the jump flux is the spike arrival rate and then the density just below this reference value u0. Now let's start a little calculation. So I start with the continuity equation here on the left hand side and this has two components. This is minus ddu and then I have the drift flux and I have the jump flux. Now for the drift flux I can insert my expression. So this drift flux is this here. So I will have a slope part, one over tau minus u plus r times i external at time t. And the whole thing proportional to the density, so this gives P of U T, and then I go to the jump flux, and the jump flux is new, the spike arrival rate times U minus delta U jump up to U, P of U prime T, D U prime. So the delta u jump is something finite. There is no limit process involved. It's really the, if the charge that each excitatory current pulse will put on the membrane capacity, and this causes a jump. Now let's do for a moment a small side calculation. And then I will return. As you remember, the derivative of an arbitrary integral f of y dy with upper limit x is just f of x. Therefore, if I look here on the term on the right hand side, the derivative Note that we are interested in the derivative ddu of the jump flux. The derivative ddu of p of u prime t du prime from u minus delta u jump up to u is just the upper bound 
P of U, T, minus the lower bound. And that is P of U minus delta U jump. So this is a finite jump, but it's still small. So we can make a Taylor expansion. Now, u minus p of u minus delta u is the derivative d du p of u t times delta u. And we go to second order. And because I have the minus sign here in the difference, this gives a minus one half. And then second derivative p of u t times delta u squared. And that's the end of my side calculation. Hence, what do we have? I have my, I go back to the main equation, d dt p of ut equals. Then I have a negative sign, d du of many things. So I copy this part here. So this gives me a 1 over tau. Then it gives me a minus u plus r times i external of t. And this will be proportional to p of u t. And I have the d du here. Now, if I look at my side calculation, I also have a d du p of u t with a delta u. And it's important, this is this delta u jump. So I, let me add this. So we'll have an extra an extra new, but then I would like to stay inside these parentheses. So I have to multiply with tau, then I have my new, and then I have this ddu p then i have this ddu p of ut which i will pull out of the parentheses um, which means i just have left the delta u jump okay and now i have nearly everything what is missing is this term that has the second derivative So let's now close this first bracket and say the whole thing is now applied on the p of u t and I can close the curly parentheses, the braces, and then I have the second term plus one half spike arrival rate again from the jump drift uh, from the jump flux and then i have my delta u jump squared and then i have finally the second derivative ddu squared p of ut so let's make a short comment. So this DDU here has, a, has the effect via the product rule that it has to be applied on this side, inside the parentheses, and then it has also be applied here. This second derivative, second derivative d squared, d u squared, this second derivative is only applied on 
the probability density because there's there, there are no further dependencies. Okay, so we see we have two terms and it's standard to rewrite them in the form in the following form. I say I have a term that is DDU and then P of U T and here whatever is inside this will just be 1 over tau gamma of u and t. And then I have my second term plus 1 half. And here I say this is now a constant. It's called the diffusion constant. And then I have my second derivative d squared du squared p of u t. Another way of writing this is also to say this one half d can be written as sigma squared over tau. It's just a different name for the same constant. Okay, and this equation that we have here, the partial derivative of the density p of u t, and then I have a first order derivative and I have a second order derivative, both with respect to u. This equation is called the Fokker Planck equation. So we started with the continuity equation. We put in the drift flux, we put in the jump flux, we made an expansion to second order, and we arrive at the Fokker Planck equation. And this Fokker Planck equation essentially describes the fact that I have membrane potential trajectories, and in the absence of a threshold as a function of time, I can always decompose it in something that has a deterministic movement. And then all the fluctuating trajectories are in some neighborhood around this deterministic reference trajectory. So all the trajectories stay in that region here. And of course, I have many trajectories and this width here would be the standard deviation sigma that uh, is characteristic for the free solution. So we went from the continuity equation to the Fokker Planck equation, and, is, and the free solution is a Gaussian distribution with, with a center that's related to the deterministic trajectory and the width of the distribution that's related to the diffusion constant or this parameter sigma that appeared in the equation. To summarize, the Fokker Planck equation has two terms. It has a first derivative, and we got an expression for this drift that depends on the spike arrival rate, nu, and the jump size. We can identify, identify the jump size with a strength w of a synaptic weight k. And then there's also a diffusion term, and this diffusion term contributes a variance sigma squared, which can again be expressed by the jump size, but squared, and, the, it, and it is proportional to the spike arrival rate. So different trajectories, if they all start at the same point, driven by the same time-dependent input current that should be added here. As we have seen, there should be a, a R times I external. So these different um, trajectories of the population driven by the same current start all at the same point, and they will evolve around a 
noise-free reference trajectory. At each moment, I have a distribution that looks Gaussian, and at the beginning, the distribution is a bit sharper, and then at the end, it's a bit broader. And so this is the free solution in the absence of a threshold. With this, I would like to finish. So in the absence of a threshold, the Fokker-Planck equation can be solved. The solution is a Gaussian distribution with a mean that is located where the corresponding deterministic equation has its solution. The width of the membrane potential distribution is time dependent. For example, in the absence of spike input, it would decay back to zero. Now, in the presence of a threshold, it will become more complicated because we have an absorbing boundary and we cannot just use this free Gaussian distribution. For the moment, however, we have worked in the absence of a threshold and no boundary condition, and that's why it's called the free solution.